This bike is made for fun. This is the 2021 Marin Rift Zone 3. This is the top of the line in the 29er aluminum versions of Rift Zones, though there are also two carbon versions of the Rift Zone priced above the sky. So as the top of the line in the alloy Rift Zone, this is a 125 millimeter rear travel, 130 millimeter travel fork, a very progressive geometry. So it's a bike that sort of goes, um, well, definitely goes well beyond what you would assume just judging by travel numbers. So for a 125, 130 millimeter travel bike, you would typically be thinking this is in the short travel trail category, almost going to be taking some cross country inspiration to how it rides. I would say I would even think about this bike as being like a short travel enduro bike. Um, the geometry is very confidence inspiring. We have a 65 and a half degree head tube angle on this guy. That means that at high speeds and steeper descents, this is going to be really stable. We have a 76 degree seat tube angle. That helps the bike to climb much better than it would um, if it had a slacker seat tube angle and still that slack head tube angle, we would have a front wheel that would wander. But with this combination of steep seat tube, slack head tube, and a relatively long reach, but then with this short 35 millimeter stem on here, we have a bike that really is kind of snappy and accelerates well, um, which is sort of the big upsides of that lesser travel. But when it comes to uh, really hitting top speeds, um, even doing some gaps, drops, that sort of thing. This bike really performs like a bike that would be like in the sort of six inch travel range. So um, if you can hear any enthusiasm in my voice, it is because I have ridden the carbon version of this bike and I am a huge fan of everything that goes into um, just the characteristics of how this bike rides. So I'm going to talk about the specifications of this bike. We'll go into a little bit more depth about the geometry of the bike. I will somewhere, I will weigh this bike and I'm going to put that in the details below or maybe it'll pop up um, right overhead within the next few seconds. Um, but I hope at the end of this that you'll have enough idea of this, this if this is the right bike for you. So to start with on the specifications on this guy, we're looking at a Shimano SLX 1x12 drivetrain. So that's an SLX derailleur there. It's got a clutch on there, so it's doing all those things we would expect a good uh, wide range 12 speed derailleur to do. It is matched with a cassette that isn't the Shimano cassette. This is an 11 to 51 tooth Sunrace cassette. And Marin has done that, I think, to bring the price of this or to keep the price in a little bit more realistic range um, mm -hmm. to basically be able to afford to put the SLX on this bike at the $35.49 price. On the cranks, we have these FSA grid cranks with a nice FSA version of a narrow wide chain ring on there. That's a 32 tooth. Uh, cranks on this guy are going to be 175 millimeters on all sizes except for the small which goes to 170 millimeters. The rims on this guy are just a house brand Marin rim. They're 29 millimeter internal. Tires are V-tire flow snap. They're in the tacky compound and they are tubeless ready. Um, so that tubeless ready means that there's still inner tubes in here when it comes from the factory. But to set this up tubeless, you're just going to take the tube out, buy some valves and some sealant, and you're going to be off to the races because these are pre-taped rims on here. Part of the magic of this bike is the fact that this rear end is quite short. So this bike is in the multi-track family of Marin bikes. Multi-track is counterintuitive to the name. Multi-track is single pivot. How's that for some words that don't agree with each other? But because it's a single pivot design and that's your main pivot there, it means that they can get away with doing quite a short rear end on this bike. These are 425 millimeter long chainstays, 
So this is going to basically, um, even though you have 29 inch wheels, it is going to make this a really snappy maneuverable bike when it comes to the rear end. Um, so if you're somebody who tried a first generation 29er and you didn't like the huge barge like feeling of the bike, this is going to be the complete opposite. You're going to get the stability of those big wheels, but you're going to get a real short tight rear end, which helps this bike to manual or to jump really, really nicely and easily. The 125 millimeters of rear travel is controlled by this Fox Float DPS rear shock. The DPS means that it's a three position, that's that blue lever there, controls between open trail or firm. The red knob that you're looking at there, that controls your rebound adjustment. So on this guy, you would set your sag. Uh, Marin suggests 30%, but I would say from 25 to 30% sag will give you quite a bit of um, adjustment over just how the bike rides for you. So 25 to 30 percent sag, you would set that with your air pressure, then you can adjust your rebound um, to match up with that so that your uh, shock doesn't spring back too quickly. Uh, and then you have those three levels of compression adjustment. Although from my time riding this, I never uh, put my bike into the trail mode or the firm mode, it basically lived in the open mode for ups, downs, everything in between. We have a X-Fusion Manic dropper seat post on this guy. One thing you'll hear, um, I don't bitch about many things on Marins because I'm a huge fan of how they ride and what they do, but they tend to put a little bit shorter dropper posts on their bikes. So this, even on a size large, I believe is a 150 millimeter dropper post. So. I can easily run, and I did run, a 210 millimeter dropper on my personal version of the spike. We have internal cable routing. We have room for a water bottle cage on here. So we have a frame that has room for a water bottle there. It will be probably a small size bottle that you're limited to, but at least it's room for a bottle. Um, internal cable routing, so that's our dropper cable there. This is our front and or our rear shifter and rear brake line there. The cables on this guy do head out of the down tube to either head back up inside the seat tube for the dropper or to join back up below the chain stay um, for the brakes. Brakes on this are a Shimano MT420 um, so that's a four piston brake, um, but it's a four piston brake that doesn't have the super short uh, brake levers on it, which is what happens at the five series of Shimano brakes. So all that means is that you're going to be riding your brakes a little bit inboard of your grips, and at least we have lock-on grips here, so that isn't going to be a problem. We have the usual, on a Marin at least, uh, Marin bar stem combo. This stem is a 35 millimeter long stem. Handlebars are 780 millimeters. We have that SLX shifter on here with those nice gripped paddles. The X Fusion dropper lever has its own little sort of grip section on there. Those remotes work. Pretty well, nothing special about them, but they're also kind of on par with most things that are out there. The fork that we have, Marzocchi Bomber Z2, so this is a 130 millimeter fork. Um, and then this has the Marzocchi rail um, damper on it. That's basically sort of similar to a standard grip damper, like we would see on a Fox Rhythm fork or a non elite level of a, of a fox fork. Stock saddle on here with some of those crazy graphics that kind of go with the graphics on the frame itself. So this is a 148 mil boost on the rear end of this bike. And then, so that's through axle, through axle on the front as well. This Z2 that's on here is the shorter offset fork. So to sort of go with current trends, um, sticking with a shorter offset port and fork, 
which uh, from my riding, regular offset and shorter offset forks, um, not a huge difference, but uh, I did actually, I noticed it on the climbs that it uh, kept the weight underneath you just a little bit more, even with a slacker head tube angle. We have 203 front rotor on here, 180 millimeter rotor on the back. So those are pretty much all of our specs that we have going on this bike. Now, the bike we're looking at here is a size large. One of the things that makes it work so well is the fact that it's got a totally modernized reach number, which for a size large, this is 480 millimeters. Um, that 425 millimeter rear end length, 60, 65 and a half head tube angle, 76 seat tube angle. All those things add up to a bike that feels really, really good in the size large for somebody in the 510 to 61 range. Um, extra large would probably be six foot one to six foot four, medium five seven to five ten, and a small five four to five seven would be my sizing suggestions on this. This is the 2021 Marin Rift Zone 3, 3549. That is a Canadian price. So in the States, I will put that in the description as well, what the US price is. Um, this is a phenomenal bike for the mid $3,000 range in Canada. It punches well beyond its travel numbers. Um, you can ride this really aggressively. It sort of begs you to. And this could be an amazing step up bike that helps you to learn sort of how to ride with the newer geometry on these bikes. Uh, the wide handlebars, the slack head tube, steep seat tube, all these things require a little bit of a different technique. And this could be the bike that would help you to get the most of that modern setup. There we are, the 2021 Rift Zone 3. I'm Graham. This is Bike Bros. We're a bike shop in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. We love talking bikes and we love putting people on the bike that's going to put the biggest smile on their face. Thank you.